In this section of the program, we'll be dealing with inspecting and repairing damaged tool joints and drill pipe. Tool joints are technologically much better today than they used to be. For example, they last longer thanks to hard facing, which is also called hard banding. The outer surface of the box used to wear out at a faster rate than the rest of the pipe parts. Fixing a hard tungsten carbide band around the softer steel of the box significantly decreased the amount of wear. The facings put on the box end instead of the pin because wear on the outside of the box proportionally decreases the torsional strength of the connection. The same sort of wear on the pin doesn't have much effect. Usually, the hard facings welded into a recessed area cut into the lower part of the box. It's relatively flat and smooth, but like everything else, there's good and bad examples. Bad facing sticks out unevenly from the joint, and it's very rough. The roughness can damage the casing and BOPs, so watch out for signs of wear on the wear bushing. If you see any rough facing on pipes, tell your supervisor about it. You can run the pipes below the casing in open hole conditions until it smooths out, but do it carefully. The banding rubs against the formation and that'll wear down the rough particles. If you have to run rough facing inside risers, BOPs or casing, fit rubber protectors on each length of drill pipe to protect them from wear. Most factory applied hard facing extends down the taper of the tool joint. This finger is to prevent undercutting. Sometimes, when the pipe has to go through a bend or deviation down hole, the sides of the hole will wear the taper area if the fingers aren't there. While you're inspecting and tripping, watch out for signs of excessive undercutting. If you see any, take the pipe out of the string and mark it for shop repair. Under-torquing is another common problem. If you don't use enough torque when making up, the tool joint will wobble down hole. Wobbling will make the crown of one thread bind against the flank of the mating surfaces of the shoulders and create wear. Proper torquing extends the life of tool joints. They need to be tight enough to keep them from loosening or making up tighter down hole, but not too tight otherwise threads and shoulders will be damaged. To make sure you're getting the right torque, check your torque measuring instruments and procedures. One easy way of doing this is to use two gauges and load cells in tandem and compare the readings. They should be the same. Another is to couple the load cell and gauge to a lifting device and pick up a known weight such as a measured length of drill pipe or drill collar. You've got to know the size, weight, class and type of pipe you're working with and how much torque it needs. One that's fairly commonly used is premium grade G105 5 inch pipe with NC50 connections. Proper torquing is always important, especially with new tool joints. With them, the pin is only two thirds as strong as the box and the only way their strengths can be made equal is through compressive loading of the mating shoulders. You'll have to calculate torque values to provide equal load carrying for the box and pin members. Let's make sure we know what we're looking for when we inspect tool joints. There are three basic parts to the thread. The root, the flank, and the crest. On a new thread, the crests and roots are relatively flat. As they're used, the edges get worn and work hardened. From then on, the rate of wear will be minimized because the molecular structure is compacted, unless the joint's abused, of course. We mentioned earlier that insufficient makeup torque allows the tool joint to wobble down hole and so makes the crown of one thread bind against the flank of the mating thread. If this goes on, it'll wear the flank so much that the thread will break. And if enough of them do, the joints will part from one another and you'll be stuck with a fishing job. There's also a good chance that the seal won't be able to contain the high mud pressure, and once the shoulders start to leak, the threads and shoulder will erode more, 
and the already serious problem of breaking threads will get even worse. So stick to the proper makeup procedures and you'll reduce thread damage. But if there is a problem, make sure you know how to identify it and deal with it. A good time to inspect the joint for damage is while you're cleaning it. After you've removed all the old dope and dirt, carefully run your finger over the shoulders and threads to check that they're smooth and flat. There should be no signs of lapping. If there's minor thread damage on the pin, it can usually be repaired. Small nicks and dents can be cautiously filed away with a triangular file. Don't nick the root area with the file. If you do, you'll create a place from which a crack could start. If there are any small galls on the shoulders, file them lightly until the area is smooth. Use a straight edge to check for stretched pins and belled boxes. If the pin's stretched, there'll be a gap. It's usually easy to see when a box is belled. You can also measure it with calipers. If you're sure the threads are stretched, mark the drill pipe with a band of red paint around the damaged tool joint and take it out of the string for shop repair. Do the same with pins that have severely lapped threads. Thread lapping is serious. If threads are sharp rather than rounded, that's a sign of under-torquing, or that they were dirty when they were made up. It's dangerous to run them into the hole because they can't hold up under the pressure and torque that are needed. Look out for small cracks in the root area of the threads on both pins and boxes. Remember, the only seal in the connection is at the shoulder. The threads don't seal at all. They only act as a jack to pull the mating surfaces together. Any damage which stops the shoulders mating properly will cause a leak when the mud's pumped through at high pressure. If a bent joint is run into an open hole, it rubs more on one side than the other, so you get uneven wear on the OD of the box. If the amount of wear is more than the recommended minimum, the pipe will fail. The API publication, RP7G, will tell you the minimum wall thickness you can use. So, let's summarize how to inspect joints and what to look out for. Remove the thread protector and clean the joint. While rinsing it out, check the threads for galls, washing and lapping. Use a straight edge and profile gauge to check for stretching. On the box end, Check for eccentric wear or excessive belling. Dope the joint and go to the next one. If you find any damage, mark the tool joint with a band of red paint to show that it needs to be repaired. So far, we've covered the inspection of tool joints, but we haven't said much about inspecting the pipe body. Remember, more failures occur in the slip area than in any other part of the pipe. First, Clean off dry dirt and corrosive materials and rinse the pipe body with fresh water. Examine the slip area closely. Watch out for flat places with deep dye cuts. This type of damage usually leads to serious downhole problems. It's often the result of worn rotary bushings. As the bushing wears, the slips settle lower and lower. The bottom part of the bushing begins to wear more rapidly, so there's less lower slip support. This throws extra strain on the upper slip region, and that tends to crush and damage the pipe. You should monitor bushing wear all the time to stop this happening. If you find that damage has occurred though, mark it with red paint and replace the bushing right away. If there are any other questionable areas where washouts could occur, Mark them in the same way. Those are the basics of damage assessment. Let's just summarize them. Make sure all torquing equipment is working properly and that you're applying the proper torque for the class of pipe you're using. Look out for shoulder damage like galls and nicks, thread damage like lapped or broken threads, stretched pins and belled boxes. Take care when repairing nicks and galls. File the affected surface lightly until it's smooth. Shoulders should only be refaced by a specialist. 
watch for eccentric wear. If you find it, mark the joint and remove it from the rest of the pipe. Use rough hard facing with extreme care. It can seriously damage BOPs and casing. Always check rotary bushing for wear.